Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining Patanjali Yoga Sutras Vibhuti Pada. And let's start with chanting. Om Paramatmane Namaha Shri Patanjala Yoga Darshanam Atha Vibhuti Padaha Desha Bandhaha Chittasya Dharana Desha Bandhaha Chittasya Dharana Desha Bandhas Chittasya Dharana Desha Bandhas Chittasya Dharana Tatra Pratyaya Eka Tanata Dhyanam Tatra Pratyaya Yaya eka tanata dhyanam tatra pratyaya eka tanata dhyanam tatra pratyaya eka tanata dhyanam tat eva artha matra Nirbhasam Swarupa Shunyam Eva Samadhi Tat Eva Artha Matra Nirbhasam Swarupa Shunyam Eva Samadhi Tat Eva Artha Matra Nirbhasam Swarupa Shunyam Iva Samadhi Tadeva Artha Matra Nirbhasam Swarupa Shunyam Iva Samadhi Trayam Ekatra Sainyamaha Trayam Ekatra Sainyamaha Trayam ekatra sainyamaha, trayam ekatra sainyamaha. Tad jayat pragna alokaha, tad jayat pragna alokaha, tad jayat pragna alokaha. Jayat Pragna Lokaha Tasya Bhumishu Vini Yogaha Tasya Bhumishu Vini Yogaha Tasya Bhumishu Vini Yogaha Tasya Bhumishu Vini Yogaha Trayam Antar Angam Poor Vibhyaha 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 Tat Api Bahis Angam Near Bijasya Tat Api Bahis Angam near be just ya. Tadapi Bahirangam near be just ya. Tadapi Bahirangam near be just ya. Vutana Nido the Samskario Ho Abibaba Pradur Bavao Nido Dakchana. Chitta Anvayaha Nirodha Parinamaha Vyutthana Nirodha Sanskara Yoho Abhibhava Pradur Bhavao Nirodha Kshana Chitta Anvayaha Nirodha 
ಹರಿನಾಮ ವ್ಯುಥಾನ ನಿರೋಧ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರಯೋರಭಿಭವ ಪ್ರಾದೋರ್ಭಾವ ನಿರೋಧಕ್ಷಣಚಿತ್ ಆನ್ವಯೋ ನಿರೋಧ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ವ್ಯುಥಾನ ನಿರೋಧ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರಯೋರಭಿಭವ ಪ್ರಾದೋರ್ಭಾವ ನಿರೋಧಕ್ಷಣಚಿತ್ ಆನ್ವಯೋ ನಿರೋಧ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ತಶಾಂತ ಬಾಹಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ತಶಾಂತ ಬಾಹಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ತಶಾಂತ ಬಾಹಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ತಶಾಂತ ಬಾಹಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಸಾರ್ವಾರ್ಥ ಏಕ ಅಗ್ರ ಅಗ್ರತೋ ಕ್ಷಯ ಉದಯ ಚಿತ್ತ ಸಮಿ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಸಾರ್ವಾರ್ಥ ಏಕ ಅಗ್ರತೋ ಕ್ಷಯ ಉದಯ ಚಿತ್ತ ಸಮಿ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಸಾರ್ವಾರ್ಥಾಗ್ರತೋ ಕ್ಷಯೋದಯ ಚಿತ್ತ ಸಮಿ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಸಾರ್ವಾರ್ಥಾಗ್ರತೋ ಕ್ಷಯೋದಯ ಚಿತ್ತ ಸಮಿ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ತತ ಪುನಃ ಶಾಂತ ಉದಿತೂಲ್ಯ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಯ ಚಿತ್ತ ಏಕ ಅಗ್ರತ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ತತ ಪುನಃ ಶಾಂತ ಉದಿತೂಲ್ಯ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಯ ಚಿತ್ತ ಏಕ ಅಗ್ರತ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ತತ ಪುನಃ ಶಾಂತೋದಿತೂರ್ಯ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಯ ಚಿತ್ತ ಏಕಾಗ್ರತ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ತತ ಪುನಃ ಶಾಂತೋದಿತೂರ್ಯ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಯ ಚಿತ್ತ ಏಕಾಗ್ರತ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ನುಸೂತ್ರ ಏತ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯು ಧರ್ಮ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಅವಸ್ಥಾ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾ ೂತ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯು ಏತಭೂತ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯು ಧರ್ಮಲಕ್ಷಣ ಧರ್ಮಲಕ್ಷಣ ಅವಸ್ಥಾ ಧರ್ಮಲಕ್ಷಣ ಅವಸ್ಥಾ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ೂತೇಂದ್ರಿಯು ಭೂತೇಂದ್ರಿಯು ಏತೇನ ಭೂತೇಂದ್ರಿಯು ಏತೇನ ಭೂತೇಂದ್ರಿಯು ಧರ್ಮಲಕ್ಷಣಾವಸ್ಥ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾ ಧರ್ಮಲಕ್ಷಣಾವಸ್ಥ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾ ಧರ್ 
Shanta Udita Abhyapadesya Abhyapadesya Dharma Anupati Dharmi Shanta Udita Abhyapadesya Avyapadeshya Dharma Anupati Dharmi Dharma Anupati Dharmi Shanta Udita Avyapadeshya Shanta Udita Avyapadeshya Shanto Dita Vyapadesha Shanto Dita Vyapadesha Shanto Dita Vyapadesha Dharma Nupati Dharmi Dharma Nupati Dharmi Shanto Dita Yapadesha Dharma Nupati Dharmi Krama Anya Anyatwam Krama Anyatwam Parinama Anyatwe E tuhu Krama Anyatvam Parinama Anyatve Etuhu Krama Anyatvam Parinama Anyatve Etuhu Krama Anyatvam Krama Anyatvam Parinama nyatwe, Parinama nyatwe, E to who, E to who, Kraman yatwam, Parinama nyatwe, E to who, Kraman yatwam, Parinama nyatwe, E to who, Parinama. Traya Sainyamat Atita Anagata Nyanam Atita Anagata Nyanam Parinama Traya Sainyamat Dati Tanagata Gyanam Dati Tanagata Gyanam Dati Tanagata Gyanam Parinama Traya Sainyama Dati Tanagata Gyanam Parinama Traya Sainyama Dati Tanagata Gyanam Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti
So, so far in the third chapter of the Bhutipada, right, we've talked about the three depths of our attention, dharana, where we choose and fix our attention somewhere with some effort. There's a bandha involved. There's a, a holding involved. Dharana means to hold. So the, the bandha, make a bandha with our mind to the object of choice for attention. And dhyana, the mind starts to meld into that object of attention. And samadhi, so you have three, the final three angas, limbs of ashtanga, the eight limbs of yoga are dharana, dhyana, samadhi. In samadhi, you go one step deeper into from, in dharana, you choose your object and you fix your mind. In dhyana, the mind starts to flow and the peripheral, that external awareness drops off. The mind flows with some continuity and some naturalness to it, effortlessness to it. In samadhi, then, your sense of self dissolves between you and the object. Where you, en where you begin and where you end becomes unclear. So we call that shunya. Shunya. That's a common term in Buddhist culture, shunya, usually they call it emptiness, right? shunya literally means emptiness or void. And these three depths of attention are a little bit, they're, well, not a little bit, they are, they're, they're not fully in our control, directly in our, under our control. Dardana we can choose, but then once we're in Dardana, once we've chosen our attention, our point of attention, if we're able to meld in, deeper into attention, depends on the, the state of our system, the condition, how we've been taking care of ourselves. So this whole thing from the first chapter of managing when we're in a state of balance and when we're not in a state of balance and trying to always be attentive to that and keep ourselves in balance, right? not just so we have more clarity and a better experience, but also so that we have more depth of attention, more stability and depth of attention, which gives you a, a more depth of insight into the thing you're focused on. Just like on the asana mat, right? If you're thinking about too many things, then how can you understand, how can you be attentive to the subtleties of your practice? You can't. The same with your, your children. If you're on the phone and cooking, you can't attend to your child very well. Too many. The mind has to be able to devote itself to the one object. So we talked about then there's three different ways we can cultivate so that the mind has a better capacity when it does choose and it has more of a capacity for focusing. Um, and we have to we have to review these three things because the next section from 13 to 16, we're going to talk about how do you how do you uh, how do you apply those those suggestions for cultivating what these different types of fertilizer to make our soil richer to produce better flowers more fragrant flowers and healthier fruits and stronger branches that can hold bigger more voluptuous healthier fruits right how do we how do we apply the, understand the process of Ourself, right? So we have to understand, right? The first thing he said is there's, you know, you can just sit down and you can try to focus and you can become more uh, clear about 
what's going on in your mind when the mind is focused and when the mind is deviant, right? And try to cultivate the focused aspect of the mind. So we call that Nirodha Parinama, the transformation of developing more control of the mind, more Nirodha. And the other one is called Samadhi Parinama because it's about creating a, uh, an environment in your consciousness that's more conducive to delving, merging deeper into the object. So Samadhi Parinama. So um, making a habit of not multitasking or if like you having to drive here and to there because you have three kids and they all have different schedules with their, you know, then you're running around uh, not very grounded because doing more than you can handle in the sense of being able to keep yourself grounded and centered. Not that there's a limit, you know, for that's universal for everybody about how much is appropriate for you to do or not to do because it's going to cause an imbalance in your system. But each person, you know, is going to be able to handle juggling more things with more grace, internal grace, than other people. Some people can only handle a couple of things. Some people can handle an enormous amount of things. Um, and that's just, you know, something to be attentive to for yourself. Because if, if your mind has that habit where it's always, it's conditioned, like all day long you're running after so many things and you're not grounded, then when you sit down to try to meditate, that pattern of not being grounded is going to be resonating and recycling through your system and you're not going to be able to go deep into the meditation. Because that's the way you've conditioned yourself to be scattered. Um, and what's the third thing? The third thing is, you know, being, getting to know yourself better. The cleansing of the memory, as we call it, getting to know yourself better, to be more aware of the way your psychology functions and the way your psychology uh, convinces you to do things that maybe you know, or are not helpful to the task at hand. So I'm going to put the screen back up. But uh, before I do that, raise your hand if you want to. So the three party namas that you, you just try to practice you or you try to manage your life better. So there's a better you know, sense of balance that you're trying to, you're able to maintain throughout your day, uh, or understanding yourself better. And these are the three party namas: Niroda, Samadhi, Ekagrata. So these are the th uh, three things that we're working with. But there's, but how do we? When do we pl apply which one? That's the the issue to be considered when and how do we apply those three different party namas. So through, there's three considerations that potentially is, we're going to talk about from this sutra here, 313. They're the dharma, the lakshana, and the avastha. Etena bhutendriyeshu dharma lakshana Avastha Parinamaha Vyakyataha. So the cultivation must be deliberated according to our innate capacity, what we're capable of, and the what's specific needs and uniquenesses that we have, and the timing, the or the phase phase of development that we're in. Cultivation must be deliberated according to our innate capacities, specific needs, and the phase we are in. So the the words etena bhutendreshu dharma lakshana 
अवस्था परिणामा व्याख्याता एथेना मीन्स um, by means of this एथेना is a form of एथा it's the instrumental form by means of this and so he's referring to the the three party namas the niroda the samadhi and the ekagrata party namas bhutendriya means uh something that's alive a living being right because if it has elements bhuta means elements material elements and indriya is the word for material senses ears eyes tongue nose uh touch right if you have material elements and you have senses then you must be alive uh an in incarnated living being bhutendriya dharma means our purpose or capacities dharma in this sense our purpose or capacities right and part of this means you know what our purpose in the right now and also maybe there might be possibly a ultimate purpose lakshana means the unique characteristics specifics avastha means the timing of the stage of development so the three things that we need to consider uh when we're looking at which of the party namas you know are we going to focus more on practice are we going to focus more on managing our daily life or are we going to uh and our tendency to to multitask too much um beyond our capacity to to stay grounded or are we going to focus more on our psychology understanding the the way we work uh internally more more carefully more intimately so how are we going to apply these those three party namas we're going to look at our capacity and our uniquenesses and and the timing the phase of development that we're in uh parinama means to change it's referring to to what we talked about the three parinamas niroda samadhi and ekagrata uh and how are we going to and it's our transformation towards uh cultivating a uh, or increasing our capacity for a deeper meditative experience right cuz the meditative experience is not limited simply to just when we sit down and meditate uh the meditative experience is a quality of our attention that we're able to engage with all types of activities all types of relationships that we get involved with it could be relationship with cooking relationship with talking to your friend relationship with your partner or your child or with driving or a relationship with your self on your yoga mat these are all different types of relationship that the ego is having with uh the experience in the world the inner and the outer world so vyakhyata means that it's it's known clearly literally it means that it, it's like it's been calculated out it's known clearly in a way that you can kind of um calculate or um account for right so in this sense it's we're talking about creating a clear strategy right that we we can see the the steps of progress that we need to make and the steps of action that need to be implemented to chart that course of progress so the important words the important considerations when we're thinking about is sitting down and meditating is that going to be more helpful like somebody you know when you're a beginner maybe if your attention 
is not very grounded or not very connected with your body and with with things um you don't have a good capacity to understand things in a subtle way then practice could mean putting them on the yoga mat and teaching them breathing and asanas and vinyasa and getting the mind more under control by giving them the tools of breathing and movement the asana practice or it could be maybe you have you know somebody they have already uh, a good capacity to sit down and there's not a lot of drama going on they can just sit down and be quiet and so you can instruct them in meditating from the beginning because they have that capacity already um, you might want to think about like being able to reduce how much you have to run around in your daily life because you're constantly feeling like rushed and anxious about all the things you have to do and that's means that you're you're doing more than you have the capacity to stay grounded doing um, and maybe there there could be a process of implementing some some reminder moments throughout the day some five minute moments every couple of hours to reground yourself so there's lots and lots and lots of ways to to look at these things to understand them and to think about applying them um, in terms of like getting to know yourself better uh, that's definitely for everybody some people are going to need to look at that more like with the guidance of maybe a counselor um, some people can work that out on their own through reading about things and then just contemplating and observing themselves in their practice and in their daily life uh, seeing the things that they've read about or heard about they might be able to apply those things to understand themselves better tatath punaha right? again and again and again keep cultivating this process of understanding yourself and being able to manage your own psychology better your reactions and your tendencies to respond to certain types of cir circumstances in a more conscious way in a less compulsive way uh, two times let's say the sutra Etena Bhutendrieshu Dharma Lakshana Avasta Parinamaha Vyakyataha Etena Bhutendrieshu Dharma Lakshana Avasta Parinamaha so a seed has a capacity to become a plant, produce flowers, and ultimately to produce fruits. But, but in the stage of a seed, first thing it needs to become a sprout. It can't produce fruits or flowers, and you don't want to feed it and treat it like to try to make it produce flowers and fruits when it's still a seed. You have to treat it in that way. So when we're talking about avasta, uh, timing, the phase of development, this is what we're talking about. What stage of development is it in? Once the seed is sprouted, it's, um, you know, before it sprouts actually, the seed is usually pretty durable. It has a hard case around it, which protects it until it's in the proper environment, until it's been in a moist environment long enough to soften the hard shell and then for the inside to get woke up and to start growing. Right? Once that happens, then it's in a different phase. And now it's a sprout. 
and it's very vulnerable. Anything could come along, and if it starts getting eaten, it's probably not going to live. So it's very vulnerable at that point. It needs to be cared for and protected so that it can grow until it's sturdy enough, until its stem and its roots are, are strong enough and thick enough that it can handle a little bit of abuse, of natural abuse that it might encounter without uh, being overly damaged. Um, so in terms of like, you know, the different ingredients that you would give to a plant, soil, sunlight, water, um, fertilizer, all these different things, what time of year, uh, how and when we apply these things is very important. It's going to influence and affect the outcome the vitality of the plant's ability to produce flowers and fruit. If you do it in, in a more harmonious way, you apply the different materials that the plant needs at the proper stage and in the proper amount, then you, you can maximize or increase the vitality of the plant to produce better, stronger, healthier fruits. So even though the seeds might have you know, the potential to become enormous and produce an abundance of crops and fruits and fragrance, flowers and whatnot. It's not a guarantee that that will happen. It they needs to have the right conditions at the right timing in order for those things to happen. Uh, and this is an important thing, right? If we don't want to damage it along the way because those scars will leave lasting effects on the ultimate development of the tree or the plant, whatever type of plant it is. And that's the same with a butendria, a sentient being that has senses. Uh, I kind of talked about this just a little bit already, so go to the next page. Ah, oh, next page. Very good. You want to say the last sutra one more time? Let's say it one more time. Etena bhutendrieshu dharma lakshana avastha parinamaha vyakyataha. That's the main one in this section. Dharma lakshana avastha. The capacities, the specific uniquenesses and the timing, the stage of development that is in. In relationship to the three different ways that we are able to make our, increase our capacity for meditative experiences. Nirota, Samadhi, Ekagrata. Ekagrata is the one that's uh, getting to know yourself better or purifying your your inner world better, managing your inner world better. So the next sutra, Shanta Udita Avyapadesha Dharma Anupati Dharmi. Shanta Udita Avyapadesha Dharma Anupati Dharmi Shanta Udita Avyapadesya Dharma Anupati Dharmi uh, So Samskara just means tendencies basically our latent tendencies so, as our samskaric tendencies merge with current situations which potentials manifest are not yet to be are not yet determined there are always multiple possibilities however the dharmin the person remains constant the one on that transformative journey right is remains constant Shanta means the past, memories, 
past memories and tendencies, some scars. Urita means what is happening right now, the present. Avyapadesha, not yet determined, undetermined. Multiple possibilities that have not yet been determined. Dharma means our capacities. Right? There's lots of different capacities. If you have an a apple, lots of different possibilities. It could fall behind the, you know, the, the stove and become a moldy apple. It could get washed and diced and baked and become apple crisp. It could get picked up and eaten. Uh, it could get taken out into the backyard and planted and become a tree. So many different uh, capacities, possibilities that it has that have not yet been determined. It um, depends on what circumstances come along and interfere with the course of the apple's life. So, anupatin. Anupati means the results, the following results. Not yet determined. Following results. Dardamine means a person. Uh, and the way Dardamine works is it's like yogin. Yogin is somebody who has yoga or who practices yoga. So a Dardamine is somebody who has Dharma in the same way yogin is somebody who has yoga. So, because we all have dharma, we all have latent capacities and ultimate purposes in our life, we are all dharmins. It's a cinnamon for, for the soul, for the Atman. Uh, each person has their own propensities, their own talents. Each person has his or her own life to live and their own purpose to fulfill. So we are all Dharmins. Shanta Udita Avyapadesha Dharma Anupati Dharmi So for that Dharmi, the one who has Dharma, right, what they become is not yet determined. It depends on, you know, how the past and the present come together, what they're going to do to go forward into the future. Uh, it also is referring, so it's referring to two things. One is the fate of the Dharmin is not yet determined. And also the, the nature of using the word Dharmin, there's a sense that um, you know, like a caterpillar has the innate um, capacity to become a butterfly, is innate potential, is innate essence, is to ultimately be a butterfly. Hopefully that will happen to him, but it's not guaranteed, right? And an apple seed is innately, right, has the potential to be an apple tree producing many, many, many more apples and apple seeds inside those apples. So we're also like that. We have a potential to be fully enlightened. Our, we have, as one of our capacities and potentials, the full enlightenment inside of us in seed form. It needs to be properly developed. It's not guaranteed. Right, of all the enlightened beings that have existed, right, none of them, you know, in all my past lives, no enlightened being has ever been capable of enlightening me. So, despite all the, you know, potential that is there, it hasn't happened yet. Even though maybe I've had countless of lifetimes to unfold and develop. Uh, still yet hasn't happened. Um, so it needs to be properly developed. We need to understand the stages of development that we're in. 
and what unique things are going to help you to move from one stage to the next. And we need to understand where we're trying to go towards. What, what are we trying to engineer? If we're trying to engineer the Buddha nature, it's much different right, than if we're just trying to engineer the perfect asana for Instagram photos. So when, when they say we're, we all have the Buddha nature or we're made in the image and the likeness of God, this is what they're talking about. We have that capacity within us, but it needs to be nurtured in the right way in order to experience it. Shanta Udita Avyapadesha Dharma Anupati Dharmi. One more time. Shanta Udita Avyapadesha Dharma Anupati Dharmi. Next Sutra. Karamanyatvam Parinamanyatve Etuhu. Karamanyatvam Parinamanyatve Etuhu. As we grow, develop, and transform, we pass through an unfolding sequence of steps that is the cause of our growth and development, the cause of our transformation. Krama, Krama, Anyatvam, Krama, Anyatva, Krama means steps, Anyatva means other. Parinama means change or transformation. And again, anyatva. So the steps of from one thing into the change into another thing. Basically, kramanyatvam, from one thing we're stepping, transforming, anyatva, into transforming into another thing. Hetu hu, and hetu means cause. Hetu means cause. So there's no effect without a cause. If we want to become something specific, we're going to have to create the causes to create that effect. Everything's functioning by cause and effect. If we don't want to be an angry, impatient person anymore, then we're going to have to create some causes to become patient and compassionate, not angry, right? not impatient. It's not just going to happen because we want it to or because we, we try to use the force of our will to make it happen. We actually have to understand the cause and effect relationship between anger um, and how that, where that comes from and what, and understand, even more importantly than understanding anger, is to understand what we're trying to become and create causes to develop the thing we're trying to become, which will become the antidote to the thing we're trying to leave behind. Kramanyatvam parinamanyatve The more we, we can understand how we're trying to engineer ourselves and the different things we're trying to cultivate, uh, the more we can outline where we're headed, what we're trying to do, the clearer we are, the better we're going to be able to understand and see the steps and the things that we need to look at cultivating in ourselves and the practices we need to spend more time on developing to make those things happen. Right, the the swadhyaya, the the self-reflective study, to read the text that talks about anger and cultivating compassion and understanding the suffering that the other person is going through. That's the cause of their anger, uh, so, and being able to tangibly feel that psychological process happening within ourselves and how to how that 
process when we get angry, how our breath changes and how our body gets tight. We, our shoulders come up and inside our head around our palate gets tight and our forehead gets red and seeing all these different patterns and working with our breath and our posture and the way we view things mentally, the way we formulate our thoughts, we turn it around and give it a new perspective, taking that Pratipaksha Bhavana process to reformulate and change our viewpoint, taking a different angle of view rather than just thinking that person's in my way, he's stupid, and why is he doing that? I should just kick him and get him out of my way, right? And then we're creating all this toxicity in ourselves and creating a hostile environment that we're spreading out around us also. Right? So to understand that other people have their own challenges, other people have had hurtful experiences that they haven't processed in healthy ways, or they haven't been privileged enough to be given the proper tools to work constructively with situations. You know, if you grow up in a gang-ridden ghetto area, you don't probably have good tools of wisdom to give you, to see those ideas into your mind, to help you cultivate compassion. Uh, so it's very difficult, you know. So we, uh, the more time we spend thinking about these things, the more our mind will become open to changing the way it responds emotionally to situations. So Patanjali has given us kind of an outline uh, of different things that we that are basically fundamentals for us. In the first sutra, atta, to be present. If we're caught up in our own false thinking about situations, we're not being present. Right? We're, we're not perceiving the way things are. We need to cultivate um, a, bya, a practice, be, being more attentive to our concentration and Vairagya, being able to relinquish things that interfere with our goals and making progress towards our goals. We need to be attentive to managing uh, our the state of our system when we're recognizing when we're not in a very balanced state and being able to use our tools of practice and our tools of life management skills to create more balance in our life. We need to practice cultivating quietness of mind, sitting down and letting the mind have time to just be quiet and to bring that into our asana practice. We need to think about um, our habitual tendencies and ideas about things uh, and, and transcend those habits that we've formulated fixed ideas of the world around. Uh, and to overcome our misguided compulsions, like thinking, oh, if I have some chocolate tonight, I'm going to be so happy. If only that person would stop doing that, then I would, wouldn't be upset anymore. Uh, Kleshas. Because uh, we, we want to avoid future suffering. We don't want to continue planting seeds of suffering that are going to ripen in the future. We want to plant seeds of sukha, of pleasantness, that will ripen in the future. And in the present moment, we need to cultivate this kind of vigilant clarity within ourselves that recognizes these things, to be very awake, very alert to who am I being, who, who am I how am I expressing myself and what kind of things is my mind trying to get me to do? Am I being conscious about things or am I being compulsive about things? This is Viveka Kyati. You're either compulsive or you're conscious, consciously choosing to do things. 
aware of consequences, aware of where the impulse is coming from, and and choosing it consciously, not um, like it's okay if you like to have coffee in the morning, but what happens when that coffee is not there in the morning? The compulsion to have coffee causes a suffering. You can't go without your coffee. Um, so it's okay to choose things, but being conscious of who's who's in control. And asana and pranayama, the ninth thing on the list, the ninth thing. Do your physical practice and watch yourself while you're practicing. Make the practice, the physical practice, when you're on the mat, make it a part of your swadhyaya, your self-study process. Not just a mechanical thing or not just a thing to glorify your sense of self-accomplishment but to better understand yourself, to know how to work with your energies better. I'm going to go back and I'm going to recite 13, 14, 15, 16, and then we'll close, okay? Om Etena Bhutendreshu Dharma Lakshana Avastha Parinamaha Vyakyataha Shanta Urita Avyapadeshya Dharma Anupati Dharmi Kramanyatvam Parinamanyatve Hetuhu Parinama Traya Sainyamat Atita Anagatang Yanam Om Swasti Prajabya Paripalayantam Nyayena Margena Mahi Mahishaha Go Brahmane Bhyaha Shibamastu Nityam Lokaha Samastaha Sukino Bhavantu Kale Varshatu Prajanya Prativi Sasya Shalani Desho Yam Shobaritaha Brahmana Santinir Bhyaha Aputra Putrina Santu Putrina Santu Pautrinaha Adana Sadana Santu Jeevantu Sharadam Shatam Sarvesh Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Nidamiyaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashchit Dukabhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Thank you.